Hey, what's up? It's your boy, the Backflow Bro. We're out here in Queens, New York, in one of our classes. Uh, we're doing a new series where we're going through like actual PowerPoints that we're going to be using in the classes and things like that to help explain exactly what is an air inlet valve, what is a check valve, stuff like that. Uh, we're out here at the Master Plumbers Council. They're pretty cool. Uh, I think you do have to be a master plumber to be a member. Uh, I'm not sure how the membership goes. Uh, but essentially they got a lot of different classes. They got a few different, I guess, boilers or water heaters, gas regulators, gas piping, how to tell if the gas piping is leaking, stuff like that. Um, they also do the backflow testing. They have a wet lab for backflow testing. It's a really nice little setup. If you're in the New York area or want to get backflow certified, definitely come check us out. Uh, we got weekend and weekday classes, things like that. Uh, but with this series, like we said outside, I'm going to go through like what is an air inlet valve, what is a relief valve, how to test them, how they work. Um, check out our other videos. We also have another, another video we just did on check valves. Um, essentially, at Backflow, they have either air inlets, relief valves, or just check valves, um, or both. Um, Air inlet valves, so pressure vacuum breakers and spill resistant vacuum breakers have both a check valve and an air inlet. Um, the testing procedures generally include testing the air inlets and the check valve separately. Uh, the relief valve for the RP, you kind of do it while you're hooked up to the check valves. Um, for the air inlet valve, there's only one real way to test it properly. Uh, the check valves have like five different ways. The air inlets pretty much just have to be the one way. The air inlet valves, you got a, it's kind of like a check valve. You have a disc and a seat, but then the spring pushes it open. So if there's no water pressure closing it, it'll default in the open position. Once they pressurize, it closes. Under back siphonage conditions, the spring will overload the zero or low pressure pushing it closed and thus it would open. Once the air enters the system, uh, it'll let all of the water downstream flow out of whatever outlet's open. Uh, so essentially it's kind of like your finger on the top of a straw. Once your finger is taken off of the straw, all the water should flow out the bottom of the straw and into your mouth, I guess, if you're doing something funny at a bar. Um, otherwise, it's just like, say this opens, then the irrigation system just drains all the water out. So under back siphonage, it opens to atmosphere and does not let the uh, you know, toxic contaminants from the irrigation system flow back into the water line. Air inlet valves should be tested to confirm that they open before the pressure on them reaches one PSI because it's always going to be going down when you test it. Also, you should be testing them that they open fully. Some people don't test that they open fully. You generally just take the test uh, hose off of the test cock you're on. Uh, but if you don't want to test that open fully, you should make sure that they open fully because there should could be some kind of something holding it up where it doesn't open fully. And then if it doesn't open fully, you could theoretically have back siphonage that's strong enough to suck it through like a very small air and let open. Again, there's only one way to test them. Attach a high hose to the test cock for the inlet zone. So it's test cock two for the PVV. It's, I guess, the only test cock for the SVV. Open the test cock, open high bleed, pressurizes your gauge. Close shut off two and then shut off one. Open high bleed slightly, the pressure starts dropping. And then at some point, the air inlet pops open. So say it's like dropping, 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 dropping. At 2.7, it pops open and goes to zero. That's the opening point. And again, it has to be at least one. And then you generally, usually like we were saying, most test procedures, they say to remove the hose to confirm that it fully opens. You should be doing that. Um, some, some test reports and test procedures and whatever in different locations don't really require that too much. Um, but it's generally a good idea. And also the USC 10th edition, which is like the basis for most of our courses, do require that you remove the hose to open it fully. Relief valves are specific to the RP. So you have two check valves, check valve one and two of the RP. Then you have a relief valve down here. Uh, it's hydraulically dependent on check one. So the inlet zone and outlet zone of check one are also the same zones for the relief valve. 
A sensing line, um, sometimes they are like braided supply lines, sometimes they're just like in the brass moving around. But it brings full line pressure pushing on the back side of the diaphragm. So if you notice the relief valve at the bottom, it moves into a closed position when the relief when the pressure pushes against the diaphragm of the relief valve. Then as pressure builds, the check one opens and pressurizes the zone. And now you have check one. This is kind of like the way they came up with the name, like the reduced pressure zone. Uh, or reduce pressure principle or whatever you want to call it. Check one's differential pressure is greater than the spring pushing the relief valve open. So the relief valve should remain closed. So say you have like 100 coming in, pushing it closed. Check one drops it by seven. So you have 93 in the zone. So 93 versus 100. And then this spring isn't going to be as seven. It's going to be like three or something. Or minimum two, minimum five. But they could be anything. Uh, so basically you have 93 plus 3 pushing it open and, you know, 7 across check valve 1. So it should remain closed. If it's leaking when you get there, that usually means that check 1 is leaking. In order to confirm the proper function, you got to find the opening point, the point at which it opens. So the point at which that spring pushes it open. There's multi-hose and single-hose testing methods. So unlike the air inlet, there are actually two main ways to test a relief valve. Um, single-hose, they, they test it in different conditions. So sometimes you actually get different numbers. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is if it's a really small backflow, it's usually a little easier. Let's say it's a half inch. It's probably going to be quicker and easier to do a single-hose test. If you're doing a larger one, the multi-hose test is generally understood as being like more accurate. Um, easier to do like e like not as easy to mess up with single hose like you got to be really quick with what you're doing you got to be like really i guess experienced doing it um, whereas the multi hose is kind of hard to screw it up it's not impossible to screw it up but it's like a little easier or it's a little harder to mess it up so essentially for a multi hose test you begin by hooking it up if you didn't check out our check valve uh powerpoints from another video you might want to check it out because you're essentially using a static differential test, which is a type of check valve test. Open test cock three, open low bleed, open test cock two, open high bleed, close shut off two. Close high bleed, then close low bleed. So you close high, pressure goes up, close low, goes down, and then you just get the static differential across the check valve. Then what you do, if you're doing a two hose test, you loop them. Um, all of our testing procedures pretty much in all of our classes are two valve version. Not two hose, but two valve. Um, I guess they're all kind of like three hose tests. Uh, like you got the red, blue, and yellow hoses. Uh, but anyway, you take the bypass hose and you loop it between the high bleed and the low bleed on your gauge. Uh, if you don't have a gauge and you're shopping around, definitely check out the Kruger Instruments gauges. Uh, we have a pretty decent product, and uh, if you take our classes, you'll see them in there as well. <clears throat> Once you have them looped, you open your high bleed, and then you slightly open your low bleed. This is going to equalize the pressures. So the check valve holds seven, but if you got high here and low open here, the hundred moves through here, and then it pushes up the ninety-three. So then, like the zone pressure increases. So essentially you're testing the relief valve in a back pressure condition. So what it's simulating is water coming through check valve two and pushing open the relief valve. As the pressure goes down, at some point, the relief valve opens. You get the point at which it opens. So if it's going, you know, four, th you know, five, four, three, and then like it, 3.1, you feel water coming out of the relief valve. That means that the relief valve opened at 3.1, obviously. Um, you wanna get the relief valve opening point. If you open them up both all the way, you're probably gonna get like one on your gauge and water's gonna be shooting out the bottom. You get the point at which it first opens. And also this kind of is a little better of a relief valve test because once it opens, it'll just be dripping and your gauge holds that number. If you're doing a one hose test, it, it is a little weird because you have to get the point at which it opens, but once it opens, it keeps dropping, similar to like an air inlet test. 
for the single hose, we're gonna, so anyway, the, the benefits of the three hose way of testing a relief valve is essentially it's harder to screw up, but you are getting a reading that's kind of unlikely to see in the field. So you're testing it in a condition where check valve two is leaking and you have back pressure. That's kind of like the simulated condition of the test itself. Um, whereas, I mean, how often is a domestic water RP under that condition? Like, it's pretty rare, right? Like, cause like the water's got to flow through to get to the building. Like how often is the building at a higher pressure? Like even if you have a domestic water booster pump, those booster pumps, you have to have a check valve or they don't work. Like you have to have a check valve after the booster pump or like the water just bleeds back. And then like the, you know, the booster pump's not really doing anything. So essentially, if it's coming in at 80, it's always gonna be lower on the domestic side unless I guess no one's using water and for some reason the pressure drops a little bit or something. And then how often is check two leaking on a Delta on a RP also? So it's kind of like a, uncommon condition that you would see the relief valve in when you're testing it. Uh, but it is a little easier to get and you're really just getting the spring tension. That's kind of like the reading you get on both different tests. For a single hose test, you begin by performing a directional flow test on check one. So you got high to two, high on the high side of the gauge. Attach high hose, to test cock two, short clear hose, to test cock three. Open three, or open two, sorry, that's an error on the PowerPoint. Open two, open high bleed, close high bleed, close shutoffs two and close shutoff one, open test cock three. When you open test cock three, the result is a directional flow test on check valve one. So this is just like getting yourself ready for the relief valve test. After the reading settles, you report the values, it's fresh on the gauge. And the inlet side of the relief valve is stronger and the spring remains closed. So this is zero, or I guess you have a little bit of head pressure from your short clear tube. And then you have the differential pressure across check one in there. So like say this is eight, eight is pushing against it. Nothing's pushing it open except for the spring. So it just remains closed. Then you do where you open high bleed slightly. Um, maximum a quarter turn. You don't want to just bang it open a quarter turn very slightly. At some point, the relief valve opens and you'll feel water. The trouble is, after it opens, basically um, the water just keeps running. So you, your number goes from three at 3.1, it opens, and then it just keeps going to zero. So you've got to get it when it opens. A lot of guys have trouble with that. So if you're just starting with backflow, it's probably you're, it's harder to screw up the three hose or you know relief valve test and most jurisdictions that allow the one hose also allow the, the no jurisdiction is going to be like you have to do you have to one hose all your rps uh although some of them do say you can't one hose it uh but it's kind of rare i think th these are the asse uh, uh 5013 i guess or 5100 uh or 5000 testing procedures so it's all, it's all ASSE, the way they came up with the procedures. So generally everyone accepts it, but like, for example, in California, you can't do it that way. Like, even if you wanted to, it's not, it's like not a legitimate testing procedure. You have to use like a certain books testing procedure, which is the USC 10th edition. Um, but yeah, if you're in like New York, New Jersey, wherever you're at, Florida, whatever, um, you could generally do the one hose. Nobody really has a problem with it. And they do get accurate readings and you kind of see it here. What you're simulating is a back siphonage condition on the relief valve, which if you think about it, how often is an RP under back siphonage? Well, pretty freaking often, right? Like if they do any work or flush any, if they're flushing a fire hydrant, if they're replacing a water main, anything like the, the pressure on the inlet side does drop a lot, like very frequently. Uh, but it, you know, you have, uh, so you have a back siphonage condition on the relief valve that you're simulating. So whenever it opens, that's your opening point when you first feel water. Um, but however, one caveat there is it keeps dropping when you're done. A lot of, most of the testing procedures also say to open your relief out or open your high bleed all the way to confirm that it opens fully. So similar to the air inlets, you just kind of open up the high bleed all the way and make sure it's removed and it opens fully. Uh, you can't really do that with the three hose version. Uh, mostly because like it never really opens fully. Like I guess you could like open high and low all the way and see 
but it's hard to see if it's open fully if water is like shooting in your face too. So you just kind of like open it all the way. Sometimes these relief valves, this little diaphragm area is like really small. So if you have something stuck in there, it might open a little tiny bit, but not open fully. The standards that uh, determine if it's a legitimate RP, like the, they test them in laboratories and everything. It has to vent a certain amount of flow out the bottom. So if it's stuck where it doesn't open fully, then it might not be um, working properly if it doesn't open fully. So anyway, testing relief valves, multiple ways to test. Uh, generally speaking, it's up to the purveyor how, they, how you want to test them or the state if it's regulated at the state level. Um, USC 10th edition, which is probably the most popular one as far as everywhere. I've never come across a state where if you said like, I'm using the USC 10th edition, like they said it was bad. Um, they only do the multi-hose, there's not different options. ASSE, they have a multi-hose and a single hose, and a lot of times people can kind of do either one. They do quite often get different results. Uh, you're just testing the valve in a different condition. So depending on how the springs are set up, how the discs are set up. Um, if you're doing a three hose, it's under full line pressure. If you're doing the one hose, it's under like really low pressures, right? It'd be like, like the bare minimum. Although that situation is more common in the field as far as like the valves functioning, um, it is a little harder to test it that way. So generally speaking, the multi-hose is more widely accepted. Um, you can do the multi-hose with uh, the two valve kits as well. Uh, definitely check out our other videos. But anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, we have a thousand subscribers now. Actually, the cameraman's the thousandth subscriber. Uh, he'll be in some other videos. His name's Taj. Um, but anyway, we need uh, watch hours now. So like I can monetize, but I need like 4,000 watch hours or something. Um, so if you don't mind, just watch the video over and over again, right? Or watch some of our other videos. Uh, but definitely check us out. It's uh, Kruger's Training Academy for the classes and KrugerInstruments.com for the test kits. Thanks again for watching.